Hello, welcome to Numeristical. This is the seventh video in our series on predicting baseball games. In the last video, we added starting pitching features to the model, and we saw quite a large impact. We got about another third of the way closer to in quality to, to what the Las Vegas odds predict. And to go further, we decided the next thing we're going to do is add in features based on the bullpen, the bullpen being the, the set of relief pitchers that uh, teams have available. So in this video, we will process the data and show a simple way to create features that will give us a, a good starting point for assessing the quality of the bullpen and, and incorporating that into the model. Um, before I continue, I'd like to again ask you to please uh, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it really helps me out a lot if you could do that. Uh, also want to encourage you to, to, to drop comments. Uh, I've had a few people engage with me uh, with comments, it's always really nice to hear somebody give positive feedback. So uh, if you can do that, also if you have any questions or any problems with the code, feel free to drop a comment. Um, and with that said, let, let's let's go ahead to the notebook. Okay, so in this notebook, we're going to create features for the bullpen. So at this point in our model, we've got something reasonable that captures the quality of the hitting for each team. And we've got something reasonable that captures the quality of the particular starting pitcher. So the next component we wanted to add in was the quality of their bullpen, their set of relief pitchers. Now, if I wanted to do a very, very complicated model, if I want to do something really sophisticated, you might want to do something where you look at each pitcher in the bullpen and kind of do trailing statistics to get, to get their performance, how good each of those pitchers is. And then maybe do some modeling to say how likely each of them is to pitch or how many expected innings they might pitch, something like that to kind of say for this particular game, how how influential are these different pitchers going to be? That would be a, quite a complicated model, right? That involves several moving pieces. And while we might want to do that later on to improve the model, I always think you should try to do something simple that gets you you know, most of the way there first and then worry about those improvements later. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take a simple approach where we look at each game, we know the performance of the starting pitcher in that game, so everything that's left over is the performance of the bullpen in that game. And then for each team we could have here's how their bullpen performed in that game, and we could do an end game look back and say here's the quality of the bullpen as it stands now. If I'm standing on a certain day and I look back at the last 10 or 35 or however many games of the bullpen, this was their performance. So we're kind of mixing the approaches uh, that we used for the team hitting and for the pitching. We're using the same kinds of statistics as pitching, but we're using this team averaging approach that we used to, to do the, the very initial model. And this will just speed things up. If we wanted to do a complicated bullpen, it would take a long time to, to implement. This we're going to be able to implement pretty quickly and should should be still a pretty good model. So let's let's uh, go forward. Oh yeah, and again, the, you know, one drawback of this model will be that it won't account for which pitchers are arrested or available. So that's a common uh, a common thing I, that when people are really trying to assess a game. They might even ask the manager, you'll, you'll hear sports reporters ask a manager, you know, is this pitcher available tonight? Or, you know, this pitcher pitched three innings last night, so he's probably not going to pitch tonight. And if he's a good pitcher, then you say, oh, I don't have that pitcher available at the bullpen. This will not, obviously, account for those small factors. <clears throat> so let's get started. We're going to load in our previous data set. And what's going to be our plan of attack? So again, to reiterate, we've got the summary stats of the starting pitcher's performance for each game, and we can calculate, for the most part, the stats for the overall game. There's a couple of nuances there that we'll go through. And then the difference between those two will be accountable for the bullpen. And then once we have the bullpen stats for each team, we can aggregate over the, on a team basis how well the, their bullpen has been performing. So how do we want to start this? First thing we need to do is for each game in our game level data set, so this is our game level data set, I put five rows out here, we want to know 
how many innings did the bullpen pitch? How many hits did they give up? How many runs did they give up? How many batters did they face? All those, all those statistics that we computed for pitching, we'd like to get the same statistics for the bullpen. So we have to do a little bit of work here because, for example, to get the total innings in the game, it's not just nine minus whatever the starting pitcher did, right? Because it's a little bit more nuanced. Um, for example, the visiting team might not pitch the ninth inning if the home team has already wrapped up the game. So the way to approach that is we're going to look at the, or first we're going to calculate the full innings, which is to say how many outs total were there. So here's this outs total. So you see 54 is what you would expect from a full nine inning game where the, the home team batted in the bottom of the ninth. Um, you could have an extra inning game. You could have games where the, uh, the home team did not bat in the bottom of the ninth. So we're going to take the number of full innings, that's the out total mod, or I should say divided by six rounded down. And then we're going to see how many additional outs there were. And then if there were three or less additional outs, those get attributed to the home team's pitching. And if there were outs beyond that, so four or five outs beyond that, those get attributed to the visiting team. And so from that, we're able to get, here's the total number of innings pitched by the home team and the visiting team. Then we can say that the bullpen's innings pitched were the difference between the innings pitched for the whole game and how many were pitched by the starter, which we already have from the last uh, starting pitching features that we added. Now we'd like to do the same things for bat batters faced. This is a little tricky because if you go and look through our statistics that we have from RetroSheet, they actually don't have a simple line for just batters faced. So I'm going to get pretty close by just saying take the at bats, the walks, and the hit by pitch. And for the most part that should capture the batter's face. Now there might be some situations I didn't verify this as well as I probably should, but you know there I think there are weird situations where this will not add up to the batter's face. I don't know what happens like the call third strike drop by the catcher and the runner reaches base, these sorts of corner situations. But this will be good enough if we want to go back later and try to dig in and, and fix some details we can. Now, another challenge is that we can't really get earned runs. Earned runs is actually quite interesting the way they calculate them in that the, the earned runs for the individuals don't necessarily add up to the earned runs for the team. The, the way they calculate it and attribute them to players has, again, weird nuances and corner cases. But we also saw that ERA was not necessarily the best feature, so I don't really want to spend a lot of time trying to to parse out how many earned runs did the bullpen give up. So I could just take the runs. If I want to do something with that, I can. But for the most part, we're going to focus on uh, things like the opponent's on-base average and the opponent's slugging average and these sort of modified versions of that that I talked about last time. So all these things, hits, homers, doubles, triples, walks, hit by pitch, and strikeouts, we can now get very easily. So we can run this cell and very quickly now, okay, for each game, we've got the bullpen performance in that game, both for the, the home team's bullpen and the visiting team's bullpen. And that's another thing you gotta be careful of when you're doing all this, is keeping track of what's for the visiting team and what's for the home team. Because when you talk about with the same number could be with respect to the hitters or the pitchers and with respect to the home team or the visiting team. So it's a little bit, can be a little bit confusing to keep it all straight. Okay, so now we've got that. We've got for each game, here's how the home team's bullpen did, here's how the visiting team's bullpen did. What I want to do next is say, pick a team, let's say the Dodgers, Los Angeles Dodgers. Okay, let's get their bullpen's performance for every game they played and we want to sort through them in chronological order. So I'm going to have these same two helping, helper functions that I've used before. <clears throat> now the challenge with this in our data is that the Dodgers might be the home team, they might be the visiting team in, in, in any particular game. 
So uh, what we're going to do is first we're just going to do a, uh, just a little bookkeeping to keep track of uh, which columns are with respect to the home team, which columns are with specifically with respect to the visiting team, get rid of the ones we don't want. And then we're going to make one data frame for all of, let's say, the Dodgers visiting games, all the games where the Dodgers were the visiting team. And when they're the visiting team, we want to get the visiting team statistics. And then we want to drop that suffix. We don't want to say that, that was a visiting team's whatever. We just want to say that's how many innings the bullpen pitched in that game for the Dodgers. And then we're going to do the same thing with the home team. So we're going to have two separate data frames, one that has all the visiting games for the Dodgers, one that has all the home team home games for the Dodgers. And then we're going to put them together and sort them so that they're in chronological order. And we can use this date double heading to do that. So now I've got a data frame for the Dodgers. It's got all their games in order, and it's got all these stats about the bullpen that we defined in the previous cell. And now I want to start aggregating over windows. And we, we talked about this roll column function that I wrote before, where it's going to say, OK, if, you if you've got the whole window size in the past, you, you take those sums. And if you have less than the full window size, you just sum up to what you have. And then we're going to do a little bit of correction, where if we have small numbers, we're going to kind of average in some data to kind of smooth it out. Now, this won't be as important for the bullpen, again, because it's team level statistics. So since we're starting in 1980, we should have team level, uh, team level data for everything. And so that will help us. So these numbers that I average in will not be as influential as they were with perhaps the starting pitcher model, because for the most part, once we get past 1980, we'll have uh, a lot of data on the bullpen going back over many games. And now I take the same approach I did before, where I just, uh, again, aggregate all of these columns. I define names for all of these columns, so this takes a while to give all the specific formulas. Um, but I basically give names to all of these columns and then I show how to compute them given the aggregated statistics. And I wrap this all in a function. So you give me a team, and now for every game of that team, I can tell you what was their trailing bullpen statistics going into that game. Not including that game, because that's the game we're trying to predict. So we don't know what's gonna happen in that game, but we're gonna use all the previous games. So we got a function, does that for each team, sets the index for easy lookup. And now I want to go ahead and do this for each team. So I want to have these in a data dictionary so that they're pre-computed, pre-processed, um, and ready to go so I can quickly look up any particular team. So we'll let that run. We get a little warning message. Don't worry too much about that. Um, and now let's look at Let's just check again, New York Mets. Let's look at their columns. So you can see we have all the columns we had before, all the starter columns, and then we also have these bullpen columns. So we've got lots of statistics about the bullpen with respect to a team and a particular game of that team. What were their trailing statistics? Now again, I say, here's what I want to add. Now we want to go through our main data frame. That's our plan now. We're going to go through our main data frame. And we're going to say, OK, the Dodgers were the home team. Let's look up what all the statistics were for the Dodgers and assign those as the bullpen statistics of the home team. And then we've got, let's say, the Cubs or the visiting team. We're going to get all the statistics of the Cubs going into that game and put them in as the visiting team. So now when we're trying to predict that particular game, Cubs versus Dodgers, we can say, here's the bullpen statistics of the Cubs, here's the bullpen statistics of the Dodgers. So again, we use this, uh, this approach where I, I tell it all the columns I want. Um, I add them to the dictionary. 
uh, as the keys and I make the value a blank NumPy array of the appropriate shape. And then I basically go through all the rows of the game, look up the home team, look up the visiting team, pull, this, pull all the columns I want of the home team, pull all the columns I want of the visiting team, and update the arrays in that dictionary. And then at the very end, only down here, I'll add all of those columns to my, to my data frame. This way I'm not going into the data frame every time. I'm just creating the columns in one loop and then adding all those new columns to the data frame at the end. So let's let this run. So this is running a little faster. There's a little bit of lag, but you can see a thousand. So we got to get to 90,000. So this will take, you know, a minute or two, not too bad. But um, I'll, I'll fast forward to the end where we, where we see what happens at the end. And we're done. That took a few minutes, but we got through all 96,000 rows. And then we just need to run these last two cells to add these columns to the data frame and save the data frame to a file. So this was a relatively short video. Uh, in closing, I'd like to ask you again to uh, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. And, and if you don't mind, drop a comment, let me know what you think. Um, going forward, the next video, we will add these bullpen features to the model, see what kind of impact we get, see how much closer we can get to the, the Las Vegas probabilities. And from there, there'll be a few different directions. I haven't decided where we're going to go yet. Uh, one option is to try to add in the particulars of the starting lineup to the model. Another is to add fielding performance. And another parallel thing I want to do is to start looking at the over-under, start looking at can we predict the number of runs scored and how we might model that. But now that we've got a lot of features, that might be another thing to look at to see if we can beat or exceed the Las Vegas performance on that. So that's what's in store going forward. I hope you'll continue watching and thank you very much. Have a great day.